Hi guys, my name is Doug. Welcome to the Third Style Garage. This is a channel about a restoration of a 66 Mustang convertible named Vin. This is episode 26, I think. Today I'm gonna to try to figure out how to get at the bottom of the car. I want to work underneath it, clean up some welds, see if there's spots that need to be patched up, uh, possibly look at some frame bracing. But I'm 50 and old and don't really want to crawl underneath the, on the ground anymore and weld up. And uh, I would love to just roll the whole car on its side so I can work on the base, uh, prime it, paint it, get the bottom all set, then roll the car back. Debated about just rolling on its side the way it is and realized that's a horrible idea. Uh, so I cannot afford a frame off rotisserie. That would be awesome. Uh, but I don't have one, nor do I really have the space for one. So let's see if we can figure out a way to do that. If you like this story, enjoy learning about how to do things like this with just what you've got and a willingness to try. I'd love it if you would uh, click subscribe and hit the thumbs up button. And thanks for being part of Third Style Garage. Let's watch and see what happens. All right, here's a sneak peek at what we're doing. You can see one leg on this side attached to a piece of, I don't know if it's a quarter or five sixteenths. It was the thickest I could find at the scrap yard. Piece of angle iron welded in a T, mounted to the two mounting holes for the front bumper. And then these bolt through into this two by six, which runs the length. So here's one leg that goes down that will hold the front of the Mustang. The second whole leg goes down right there. And then there's this curved spot that sticks up. And then there's a funky leg that sticks up, which will become apparent, Lord willing, in a little while what that's for. We need to fabricate the same thing for the back, which we're working on right now. Stay tuned. All right, so the jig is done. I will show you in detail in a little while, or maybe I already did. I don't know, we'll see how editing goes. It's off the front jack stands. It's time to put it, take it off of the back jack stands. Try this at home. 
All right, so this is the literal attempt number one. Tip up jig. show you great all right so here we are I'm, I'm sorry i can't get the whole thing in the picture dale try to like wiggle a little bit how sturdy is it like front to back so there's a little side to side not much front to back mm -hmm. this i don't know if this would have been easier or not to do all my floor pan work this way might have actually been easier it's engine fine. compartment i'm doing front to back here now you're gonna want some kind of support yeah we should put like a wheel chalk there yeah there is the bottom of my car she is belly facing us this is gonna be so much this is the first i've really seen this um it's gonna be so much easier to work on this i see some i can see how the body floor pan was attached I think that can be cleaned up and welded a little better. Got obviously parking brake to work on that just got cut off or brakes. Maybe that's brakes. It might be brake lines. Uh, thanks, Dale. It's my good friend, Dale. He did all the hard work. Um, look at that. I am happy with that. Three thumbs up. Three thumbs up. Uh, <laughs> looks like there was a patch to the rear frame rail. I'll have to do probably some investigating on that. Uh, rear seat belt mounts. All right, that's a wrap. All right, time for some specifics is how I built it. Um, Here's just a sketch, uh, basically two by six running all the way across, two two by six legs coming down, a kickstand at the top to prevent it from over rolling. And then this here is a quarter of a four foot diameter OSB circle that sandwiches each side of this. And then inside the circle, there's a brace uh, just to space it and stiffen it. Um, I'll show you all of that. This is the top view. So you can see the OSB sandwiches the two by sixes. <clears throat> so here's the two by six leg that it would be sitting on on the driver's side. This is the two by six that runs from one side to the other. There's just a piece of angle iron that bolts here and here where the bumper mounts. And then uh, I bolted it through, bolted it through the two by six with, uh, I think it's seven sixteenths bolts, but I'm sure that doesn't matter too much. Um, so here's the one leg that holds it. This piece here just spans to attach this back piece to here because I was worried about uh, strength at this joint. So this just spans it. This is just a spacer because I ordered long bolts or bought long bolts. Same thing at the bottom there, this two by four. Uh, it's just a spacer for my bolts. And then here I took a four foot by four foot diameter piece of OSB, cut a big circle, cut it into quarters. 
and then spaced it with a two by six. So this two by six leg here is the same leg here. If you imagine the car, let me back up, rolling down, it would sit on those two legs. Then this piece at the top here just prevents the car from rolling too far. Uh, <clears throat> on the other side, slightly different here um, instead of uh, it's mounting where the bumper brackets mount uh, so we've got one bolt here one bolt here same on the bottom where it mounts one bolt here one bolt here I needed to add a two by four let me quick run around the other side Needed to add a short stubby two by four. To so this is the two by six. That's the main structure. I needed to add a short two by four here. One, because my bolts were long, but two, to space it away from this rear valance. So spacer two by four, here's my linear two by six on the bottom. I ended up spacing my OSB out here, not for any particular reason, other than I made a mistake. When I bought this, when I measured this two by six here, I'm like, oh, I measured from one end down to how long I'd want it to be. I thought, oh, that's five feet. Great, I'll buy a 10 foot two by six, which was the most expensive part of this whole project. And that'll give me enough for the front and the back. But the bumper mounting points on the back are longer or spread farther apart. So you'd really need a 12 foot two by six, a five foot piece for the front and a seven foot piece for the back. Um, and then did the same thing here where I've got a two by six that is the leg and then a spacer board to span that joint. Um, and I feel really good about it. I'm excited to work on this. I think I will work on cleaning up, addressing issues, fixing holes, cleaning up some of my welds. Um, and then I'm gonna ponder and think for a while about um, getting the bottom to a point where I clean it, prime it, seam seal it, and paint it. Um, and then roll it back over and start working on the body work on top. Might be what I do, I'm not 100% sure. Figuring this out as I go. If you have thoughts on the order of which to do things, um, I would love to hear that. Um, you know, sequence is important. I don't want to do something in the wrong order, um, but I may, I'll make mistakes along the way. Well, thanks. I hope if you're looking to do something like this, an idea like this would work for you. The whole thing ended up costing me, I think it was about uh, $28. And uh, two thirds of that was for the two by six. The rest of the lumber was all scrap I had laying around. Um, I had a chunk of angle iron and I had to buy the bolts. So uh, not very difficult, not nearly as usable as a utisserie, way the heck better than laying on your ground, laying on the ground on your back. Uh, have a good day, everybody. Thanks.